Hey everybody, Ed Casper here. We're back out in the shop. Frampton is hooked up and almost completely ready to go. Uh, yeah, I named my corn planter, we named him Frampton, because every spring he comes alive. Get it? Frampton comes alive. Do you feel like I do? Uh, if you, you should name your corn planter. If you haven't named your planter, we'll just call it Jenny, because that's what you name things when you don't know what to name them. Um, you know, every year people over-dramatize everything and say, well, the stakes have never been higher. Uh, well, I don't know this year for planting if the stakes have ever been higher, but I don't remember the inputs being higher or more scarce uh, than this year. So when we get out and we do this here in the next month, two months, we want to do it right. And we're going to recap our Ten Commandments of Corn Planting, something I kind of threw together and learned. I learned all this stuff from other people. I'm just the one that kind of put it together in a list and talk about it. So number 10 on our Ten Commandments of Corn Planting, don't plant by the calendar, plant by conditions. Uh, here at the Illinois-Wisconsin state line, it's hard for me to get people to slow down and woe up. Um, and anymore, I, I don't fight with people. If the grounds fit, go. That's it. If the ground is fit, go. Um, you know, the only thing I ask guys is check that forecast. Three, four days from now, if there's a bitterly cold rain coming, ooh, you might want to think twice about that. But anymore, if the ground is fit, go. Because as soon as you hold a guy back, then it rains for three weeks and then everyone's mad. And I get it. So if the ground is fit, go. Uh, if you're not sure, well, is it too soon to plant? Is it too cold? Is it too wet? Is it too... If you don't know when to plant, number nine on our Ten Commandments is if you don't know when to plant, plant between the crazies and the lazies. The crazies are going too soon because they've got to. We can't get done if we don't get started. And the lazies, well, they ain't too worried about anything. So if you're not sure how to do it and it doesn't all make sense, plant between the crazies and the lazies. And by golly, I bet you make a good decision. Uh, commandment number eight. If you absolutely, positively must get out and run your planter because the giggity giggities are overwhelming you, go plant some beans. We've seen it more and more. It's becoming more common. Beans can take a whole lot more early season stress uh, than a corn seed can. Go put some beans in. And then if you still do have some gremlins in your planter that didn't show up till you got into the field, uh, you don't feel so bad because it's beans and then they're a little bit, you know, like I said, they're a little bit tougher out of the gate. So... Go plant some beans. Uh, number seven, and this one we're going to take a little time out and talk about this one. Um, number seven, flag test your emergence. Don't guess at performance. Measure it and then manage it. And I know that uh, precision is big on their flag kits, day one, day two, day three emergers. Fantastic. I love it. That's not how I do it. I follow the Randy Dowdy doctrine. I learned this from Randy Dowdy and the Next Level Group. Uh, if, if you want to know more about the Next Level Group and what it's about and what he's doing, give me a call. I'll be glad to talk about it. I'm a member, but I, I'm not affiliated uh, with it in any other way. But that's where I've learned the next few steps in planter performance and dialing a corn planter in to make it right. And what I learned from Randy was the 12 GDUs matter corn and beans. You guys have seen I've flag tested beans. So whereas precision says day one, this color flag, day two, this color, day three, that color. That's wonderful. If you want to do it that way, go ahead. How I do it is I've got two color of flags. I measure out my 17 feet, five inches. One color of flag is for 12 GDUs and under. The other color flag is for 13 GDUs and above. I promise you, Take those ears in the fall, weigh them, measure them. You will notice the difference. The same with the soybeans. My 12 GDU and under emergers was significantly more pods. Um, there's some folks out there now saying, well, we'll fly your field and we'll give you a stand count. That's awesome. That's from like 15 years ago. Uh, when precision first came on, it was hard to get the farmer to say, well, if we planted 34,000 seeds, we need 34 plants in that 17 feet, five inches. Because people were planting 34 and maybe getting 29 and going, well, that's good enough. And just like today when people say, well, spacing and singulation doesn't matter. Well, of course it doesn't. Everyone's got it figured out. You got to remember 12 years ago, 13 years ago, whatever, 
it was a bona fide train wreck in some of these fields for spacing and singulation. Now that you got it up to 97, 98, 99% to improve 1%, does, does it matter? Of course it doesn't. But we've walked fields where the guy planted 32 and he had a final stand of 23. You ain't gonna last long like that. Now, fortunately, he had a job in town, and when we went to talk about planter performance and we proved the what was going on in his field, he, you know, he spent all his money on a new shed. Perfect, it's your money, you do what you like. But the 12 GDUs and under is what matters for emergence. Came up on Monday, his neighbor came up on Friday. I don't care, as long as it's within 12 GDUs. That's what matters. Uh, number six, just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Well, Ed, I could put 8,000 gallons of liquid on my tractor and hook up to my planter. Well, yeah, you can, but should you? Think about that a few times when you're looking to spend money on certain things and do certain things. Uh, number five, the sins of your planter will haunt you all year. Your sprayer cannot fix the sins of your planter. Your combine cannot fix the sins of your planter. Yes, we need fertility. Yes, we need rain and we need sun and we need heat. I, I love it. You're right. I got it. But if we screw up that planter pass, we got to live with it for all, the whole year. Number four, this one comes from Matt Foes. It's better to be a week late than a day early. <clears throat> yes, it is. Number three, G-O-A-L. Get out and look. I learned this from Randy Dowdy. The best thing to see in your field is your shadow. And whether you want to have someone fly over and do a stand count, whatever, or you're going to flag test day one, day two, day three, or you're going to flag test GDUs or whatever it is you do, please get out in your field and walk around. Then you'll know exactly what's working and what's not. Uh, number two, slow down or speed tube up. Another Randy Dowdy uh, lesson here. You can only plant as fast as your planter will perform. I have plenty of customers that still have finger meters and downforce springs. Perfect. You can plant, you could do a great job with that, but you're gonna be planting about four miles an hour. Uh, one of the top performing guys in the next level group, same deal, finger pickup, downforce springs, no electric, nothing. Um, planted about three, three and a half miles an hour. Well, Ed, it's going to rain, or Ed, I got to go, or Ed, I got a ton of acres. Fine, then let's invest in technology that will allow you to speed up and have control over your performance. Um, there's a YouTube uh, TV series called Chasing Francis, I believe is what it's called. And the guys are trying to hit that 400 bushel uh, mark in Iowa in the NCGA contest. And on that show, they said uh, Francis was the first guy to do it, and he would put a can of soda on his row unit. And if that soda bounced off, he was going too fast. So slow down. You got a high-speed planter, good for you. Let's keep a close eye on all the performance, and you do what you need to do, but you can only plant as fast as your planter can perform. And that brings us to the number one commandment in the Casper Ag 10 Commandments of Corn Planting, and we learned all, all of us learned this from grandpa. If you plant in the dust, your bins will bust. If you plant in the mud, your crops are dud. So with that, be safe, have a little fun. Not everybody gets to do what we do for a living, so enjoy it, and let's do it right. And like I tell folks when I used to coach basketball, move with a purpose, listen to these 10 commandments. If we're gonna pull this tractor out of the shed, let's know what we're doing and why. So with that, thank you very much. Appreciate you listening. As always, like and subscribe, yada, yada, yada. And feel free to give me a call, 309-208-0117. Thank you.